starting with the first category, which is factor trinomials, A is equal to one. So this is what we've done last week. Um, it's no different than before. So just to remind you guys, how do we do this? Well, you guys like the X factoring method. So I'm gonna draw this X over here. And then the number that goes on the top is the 24. So this number goes up here. And this is the number you want um, our stuff to multiply to. And then what number goes on the bottom? That's going to be the negative 10. And you want your numbers to add to negative 10. So then you guys have to think, what two numbers should I put on the left and right sections? What two numbers add to negative 10 and multiply to 24? And then I'll give you guys some time to think about that and respond in the chat or just out loud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a negative 6 and a negative 4. Good. So when you check this, you want to double check. Negative 6 multiplied to negative 4. When you multiply that, does that equal positive 24? And yes, because a negative times a negative equals a positive number, so that's good. Let's also check, does negative 6 when added to negative 4, does that equal negative 10? And yes, it does. Cool. So now we found our two numbers. And so what do you do with these two numbers? Well, you put them in our factors. You have an x over here, you have another x over here, and then since we have a minus 6, it's going to be x minus 6. And since we have a negative 4, it's going to be x minus 4. So our final answer is that x squared minus 10x plus 24, it is equal to that, x minus 6 times x minus 4. I'm going to pause the video here, see if you guys have any questions. All right, so I'm going to enter this in x minus 6, x minus 4. x minus 6, x minus 4. Sorry, it's kind of slow, but yeah. Submit. And then let's do another problem. It's going to screen like this. And same process. So I'm going to draw my little x factor. And then what number goes on the top? It's this number. And you want it to multiply to that 4. And then also, we have a negative 4 here. I'm going to put that on the bottom. And you want your two numbers to add to negative 4. So now you guys can tell me in the chat or out loud. What two numbers can you think of that will multiply to positive four and add to negative four? So we got a suggestion that is negative two and negative two. Let's test it out. So let's test out if they will multiply to positive four. Negative two multiplied by negative two gives us a positive number because negative times negative is a positive. So yes, positive four, good. Let's check, does negative two plus negative two add to negative four? And yes, we're good for that one also. So our, uh, we are correct, x minus two, x minus two. I will write that in. So don't forget to put the x there. Sometimes people forget that, but literally you just take the minus two and you write it there. So we have x minus two, x minus two, and this can also be written as x minus two squared, which is what Estrella is suggesting. So good job. Yes, you can write it x minus two with the power of two because it's just x minus two times itself and it appears twice. So you could write it either way and it would be correct. Any questions? I will pause the video to see if you guys have any questions. Okay, so x minus two squared, x minus two squared. Okay, so we've already done um, this category before, so I'm going to go on to the next section because the next section is going to be a little bit different. So we just dealt with factoring trinomials where the a value was equal to 1. Now we're going to go into factoring trinomials where the a value is greater than 1. Okay, so notice here that in front of the x squared is a 3. So this is going to change things just a little bit, not too much, but let's start off with the x. And so now, instead of just putting 4 on the top like I usually would, what I want you to do is take the 3 and take the 4 and multiply it. So 3 times 4 is 12. So this number that goes on the top, this is your a value times your c value, your a being 3 and your c being 4. Normally, we would just put the c up there, the last number, but that's because our a value was 1. So it's just 1 times whatever your last number is. This time, since we have an a value that's not 1, 
you're going to actually, it's going to change the number that you put on the top. So it's A times C, so it's three times four, and that's going to go on the very top. And then this is still something you want it to multiply to. Okay, and then the number on the bottom is still what you're used to. So you just put the eight there and then you want it to add to eight. And then there's one more step. So this A value that's in the front, it goes onto the side as a denominator. Okay, so just write this down first and then the rest of it is pretty much the same thing. So whatever number we're going to put on top over here and here, those numbers, it's the same process. Those numbers will have to multiply to 12 and add to eight. So multiply to 12 and add to eight. So I'm gonna ask you guys to think about what two numbers can you think about that multiply to 12 and add to eight? Okay, so somebody said six and two, which is great. So I'm gonna test it out. Does six times two equal 12? Yes. So that works. And then does six plus two equal eight? Yes, that works. So six and two were the correct numbers. So what do we do with these numbers? Well, we need to simplify these fractions. So over here, we have a fraction of two thirds. That's as simplified as it can get. On the left side, we have six divided by three, so six thirds. Six can be divided by three. So what is six divided by three? Six divided by three is just two. <laughs> so we have a number that's not a fraction over here. Okay, so now that we've done that, I wanna put it together into the answer box and then I'll give you guys a chance to ask questions, okay? So with this two, you're gonna treat it the same way that you've treated any other whole number that you know. So X plus two. That part's okay, I hope. However, this time we have a fraction on this side, so two thirds. So what we do with this is, let me see what color I can use. I'll use this green, this three goes in the front and then you put the X and then the two, it just goes as the plus two. So it'd be three X plus two. Let's see how I can color that. I already used green, red, and blue. I'll use yellow. This two, is this two. So our fraction kind of ends up looking like this. So the two on the top is the plus two at the end, and then the three on the bottom of that fraction, it becomes the coefficient for the x. All right, so now I'm gonna pause the video and see if you guys have any questions, because I know this one's a little bit different from before. x plus two, three x plus two x plus two, three x plus two. Okay, and it's totally okay if you put like three x plus two first. So three x plus two, x plus two. Like if you switch the order of it, it's fine. Okay, so then let's take a look at another one. Okay, and then I wanna write in black so you can actually see it. All right, so here's my x factor thing. And what do we do put on top? We are going to multiply the two and the five, giving us 10. So remember that is the two times the five. And this one you want our numbers to multiply to 10. What do we put on the bottom? We're still gonna put 11 and you want our numbers to add to 11. And then don't forget that on the side, it needs to be over two, over two because of this two over here. So I'm putting everything over two. All right, so now you guys have to think of two numbers that we're gonna put on the tops of our fractions, two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11. And just tell me what you got. Multiply to 10, add to 11. All right, so we got a suggestion one and 10. Let's check one times 10, does that equal 10? Yes, one plus 10. Does that equal 11? And yes, so we got it right. Okay, so then we need to um, simplify our fractions if we can. So one half, one over two, that is just one over two. There's no simplifying there. It's just one half. No need to simplify that fraction. What about 10 divided by two? Well, 10 divided by two is just five. 
So now that we have our simplify, simplified numbers, we can put that into our answer box. So for the one half, I'm going to take the two that's on the bottom and put that in the front. Then it's x plus one. And where did this one come from? Well, it's the one on the very top. So the one half becomes two x plus one. And then as for the five, um, hopefully you guys already remember, it's just x plus five. Are there any questions? Please let me know. I'll give you guys 15 seconds. Time. Let's go ahead and enter that in. 2x plus 1, x plus 5, I think it was. I might have remembered wrong. Okay, I remembered correctly. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's do, um, let's do it from another section since this was just level 1. Let's do level 2. I'm not sure really the difference between level one, level two, and level three. So we'll just do two examples from each. <laughs> Don't know why they separated into three levels, but yeah. Okay. So the same process goes. We have a three and a negative four. Multiply those, you get negative 12. So you want our numbers, whatever they will be, to multiply to negative 12. And then over here, I don't see a number, but that's just one. So I want them to add to one. And last but not least in our setup, there is a three in the front. So I'm gonna put this over three, over three. And whatever number's here, we'll have to multiply to negative 12 and add to positive one. So I'll give you guys some time to think of suggestions. What multiplies to negative 12 and adds to one? So we got a suggestion of four and negative three. So let's double check four multiplies by negative three, that gives us negative 12, that's good. And then four plus negative three, that gives us positive one, great. Okay, so we got our two numbers. Let's see if we need to simplify fractions. Four over three, nope, can't simplify, so I'm just gonna write four over three. Negative three over three, that simplifies to negative one. So we got our two numbers, simplified down, and let's translate that into the factored form. So I think I used green. This three on the bottom becomes a three in the front. And then that four on the top becomes a plus four over in our factored form. So that four thirds becomes three X plus four. And then over here, this minus one, that becomes X minus one. All right. So any questions on this one? I'll give you guys 10 seconds. So 3x plus 4 and x minus 1. 3x plus 4 and x minus 1. 3x plus 4 and x minus 1. Cool. Let's do another one. Same process. I still don't know why they put it as level 1, level 2, level 3 when to me they look the same. <laughs> but we'll, we'll just do two examples of each. So same process, you have a four and a two, multiply that, you get eight. And then, I think I used blue, right? We have a negative nine. We want the numbers to add to negative nine. Finally, there is a two over here, so I'm gonna say over two, over two. And then you guys have to think of what times, what will be eight, and if you add it, it would get negative nine. So what two numbers will multiply to eight and add to negative nine? I'll pause the video to give you guys a chance to think. So we got a suggestion, negative eight and negative one. Let's test it out. We got negative eight multiplied by negative one and that gives us a positive eight, which is what we wanted. And then let's also test it out by adding. We have negative eight plus a negative one and then that gives us negative nine. So great, these are our correct two numbers. So let's simplify out our fractions if we can. So negative one half, that's just negative one half. There's no simplifying there. And what about negative eight over two? That becomes negative four. So when we write it out as our factored form, let's do the negative four first. We just have x minus four. That one, hopefully you guys are pretty used to already. Now when we deal with the one or negative one half, well, we have a two on the bottom, so that becomes our coefficient in the front. 
And then we have a negative one on top, so I'm going to write minus one over there. Okay, so any questions? I will pause the video and give you guys a chance. So we have x minus four, two x minus one. Okay, and let's go on to the last category. So level three, even though for some reason, or I don't really know why it's level one, level two, level three. Maybe it's just because of bigger numbers. <laughs> let's see. Okay. Okay, I think it is just because it's bigger numbers, but even though it's bigger numbers, it'll just take us a little bit longer, but it's still fine. So on the top, we have a six and a 35. Let's multiply six times 35. 6 times 35, that gives us 210. So we want numbers that will multiply to 210. I guess that is a little bit harder, huh? And then let's put the number on the bottom, it's a 47. All right, and then last but not least, we must put this over 6, over 6, because there is a 6 right there. So everything's over that coefficient. So now you guys have to come up with two numbers that we will place right there. Two numbers that multiply to 210 and add to 47. I'll pause the video to give you guys a chance to think about it. So this one's a bit harder just because there's so many more numbers to try. So I'll show you kind of like what goes on in my Ms. mind. Jane? Yes? My puppy just ran away. Can I go? Uh, yes. All right, bye. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Okay, so I want to show you guys what happens in my brain when I'm trying to process what numbers multiply to 210 and add to 47. So I focus in on the multiplying, so I focus in on 210. And then I think to myself, can it be divided by 2? Can it be divided by 3? Divided by 4? Divided by 5? Just like literally going down the numbers, or going up the numbers, I guess. So 210 divided by 2 gives me 105. So I have a pair of two times 105 gives me 210. But does two plus 145 give me 47? Like, will this pair add to 47? No, so I'm just gonna cross it out. Then I think, okay, so that didn't work. What about three? Does 210 and three work? So 210 divided by three gives me 70. So I have a pair of three times 70 will give me 210. But does that add to 47? No, that's not gonna work. 3 and 70 will not add to 47. So then I think, is 210 divisible by 4? So I try. 210 divided by 4 gives me 52.5. Not a whole number. Not going to work. 210 and 5. So 210 divided by 5. That gives me 42. Does 5 and 42 added together give me 47? And it does. So this is how I check it with bigger numbers because there's so many pairs to think about, it's a bit harder, right? So you need to kind of organize your thoughts. So I start with like two, three, four, five. If five didn't work, I would go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, until I find a pair that works. In this case, we found that five and 42, let me write it down, five and 42 will multiply to 210, right? So you do five times 42, and that indeed does give us 210. And then also you can check 5 plus 42, and that gives us 47. So now we found 5 and 42, and that works. So now we just have to simplify. So 5 over 6, that's just 5 over 6. What about 42 over 6? 42 divided by 6 is just number 7. So then we're going to just put it into our uh, answer box. Okay, so five over six. So let's remind ourselves how that happens. The six on the bottom gets put as the coefficient. And then this five on the top becomes the five over three. So five over six becomes six x plus five. And then for the seven, which is right over here, this one, that's just x plus seven. Okay, are there any questions for this problem? Okay, so 6x plus 5 and x plus 7. 6x plus 5, x plus 7. Okay, let's do one more, I guess, with these large numbers. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. That's what I meant to do. All right, so same process. 
take the two numbers, multiply them, you get negative 30. This is a negative number. And then take this number, put it on the bottom. We want it to add to that. Last but not least, the 6 that's over here. Put it as our denominator. And now we have to think of two numbers that will multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 29. So what two numbers can you think of that will multiply to negative 30 and add to 29, negative 29? So we got a suggestion of negative 30 and positive 1. Good. So let's test it out. Does negative 30 times a positive 1 equal negative 30? Yes. Okay, because a negative times a positive is a negative. Good. And then we also have negative 30, and then we add that to 1, and that gives us negative 29. And that's what we wanted, so that's great. So before we go ahead and put in factored form, let's simplify out our fractions. So negative 30 over 6, that becomes negative 5. And what about 1 over 6? Well, that's just 1 over 6. So for the negative 5, let's just put it as x minus 5. Straightforward. As for the 1 over 6, let me write it with my colors because I like color coding. The 6 goes in the front like that. And then we have the x, and then the 1 on the top becomes a 1 over here. So it's just 6x plus 1. So the 1 over 6 became the 6x plus 1, and the minus 5 became x minus 5. Do you guys have any questions? Please let me know in the next 10 seconds. I'll pause the recording. x minus 5, 6x plus 1. X minus five, six, X plus one. Okay, and we just did two examples from each category, but each category is pretty similar. So you essentially had six examples total. So I think that's enough. If it's not, please call me over into your breakout room so I can help you guys out.